Uh, good afternoon. Um, welcome to everyone to our annual INSS Arms Control Conference, which we're delighted to be co-hosting this year with the Foundation for Strategic Research. I'm not even going to try to say it in French. Come in. So. Uh, our topic this year is the nuclear nonproliferation regime at a crossroads. Um, and I think the challenges facing this regime are quite apparent to everyone at least sitting in this room. Uh, from its inception, the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, the NPT, has suffered from a debilitating tension between two contradictory messages regarding nuclear weapons that are supported simultaneously by the treaty. Um, the first message, obviously, is the overt, explicit message that nuclear weapons are bad, right? Um, very dangerous, and their spread must be stopped. But the second message, the implicit message, is that nuclear weapons actually have considerable strategic value for states. And that's why the states that succeeded in developing them before 1967 um, won't be rushing to give them up anytime soon. Changes in the international system, especially that came with the end of the Cold War, have given rise to concrete expressions of this tension in the form of additional states that have latched on to the implicit message of how valuable nuclear weapons actually can be. And these states are developing military nuclear capabilities clandestinely in direct violation of the commitment that they made according to the NPT to remain obviously non-nuclear. And I think efforts to stop nuclear proliferation are very difficult to carry out when the perceived advantages of nuclear weapons remain very much apparent. And so the problem is not really one of double standards, that some states are allowed and other states are not, but that rather that even with all of the talk about the dangers of nuclear weapons, um, the, the, the message regarding the strategic advantages that can accrue from the possession of these capabilities continues to resonate, and sometimes quite strongly. Um, by the same token, even though the NPT, and even though the NPT would seem to suggest otherwise, states are not equal or identical entities. And they don't become identical just because we're relating to the nuclear realm. And therefore, when we assess nuclear threats, the question of which state is striving for nuclear capabilities and for what purpose is highly relevant to these efforts. Um, in sum, I would say while the NPT created a very important norm about the dangers of nuclear weapons, which underscores the need for exercising extreme caution in this regard, nuclear weapons have unfortunately not become the outcasts that disarmament proponents would have liked. And while some states are making great efforts to strengthen the nonproliferation regime, we see others clandestinely striving for the strategic edge that they believe comes with their acquisition. And I think these are the tensions that are behind the challenges that are really facing the nuclear nonproliferation regime. And I think they'll be in the background and sometimes at the forefront of our discussions over the next day and a half. I just want to take this opportunity to thank a number of people who were instrumental in organizing this conference and hopefully making it a successful event. Um, my thanks, first of all, to the members of the arms control team at INSS, um, together with Shlomo Brom and with Shimon Stein, uh, developed the concept for this conference. I want to thank in particular Azriel Berman, who joined INSS as a research associate only last November and was thrust immediately into the organization of this conference. Thanks for all of his help in overseeing the organizational aspects, together with Emmanuel Blanc and with Danielle Weinberg. I'm especially grateful, as always, to Deborah Oppenheimer for coordinating many aspects of this conference and with the U.S. Embassy and taking care of all the arrangements for our overseas guests. Um, special thanks to the U.S. Embassy for their general support of the conference and, of course, for assisting us in um, arranging for acting under Secretary of State for Arms Control and International Security, Rose Guttemuller, um, to address this conference. 
I want to thank all of our speakers and chairs for taking the time to address this audience and a special welcome to all our speakers from abroad and we have nine speakers from abroad. Final word of thanks goes to Camille Grand, of course, uh, the director of the Foundation for Strategic Research for taking up the idea of partnership with INSS on this conference, and to Amos Yadlin, um, director of INSS, for his support of the arms control program. Uh, finally, as you're all aware, this is a closed conference. Um, and what that means is that everyone here is here by invitation only, as uh, uh, Amos said. Um, but it's uh, only two of the presentations are totally off the record and will not be taped. The first by Ambassador uh, Jeremy Sischaroff in a few minutes and the second by Acting Undersecretary of State uh, Guttemuller tomorrow morning. The rest of the presentations actually will be taped, but the setting is closed because we have presentations that are off the record and I would uh, strongly uh, appreciate if everybody respects that. Thank you very much.